The headlines tell one story, waves of immigrants and refugees arriving in Europe. But beneath the surface, there's a much darker, more complex tale at play. What if I told you the root causes of this crisis go far beyond war and poverty? What if it's not just bad luck or poor leadership? What if multinational corporations and powerful nations are quietly pulling the strings, keeping countries in a state of perpetual collapse? In today's video, we'll uncover the shocking truth about how the same powers that once colonized these regions are still doing some hidden things that are setting the stage for a refugee crisis that's only getting worse. Stick with me as we break it all down. Europe's political landscape is changing rapidly, and at the center of this transformation is the refugee crisis. It's a topic that dominates news cycles, political debates, and public sentiment. But to understand the real impact of this crisis, we need to first explore the political realities driving Europe's response. For years, Europe has prided itself on being a beacon of democracy, human rights, and humanitarian aid. But as waves of refugees and immigrants flood in from war-torn countries and economically devastated regions, that image is being challenged. Far-right parties, fueled by fears of cultural dilution and economic strain, are rising in power. Countries like Hungary have adopted increasingly tough stances on immigration, refusing to take in refugees while calling for stricter border controls. The Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has built his political platform on an anti-immigration stance. He's framed Hungary as a nation under siege, needing to protect its Christian heritage from Muslim migrants. Similarly, in Italy, right-wing populist parties like the Brothers of Italy, led by Giorgia Meloni, have surged in popularity. Meloni, who now serves as the country's first female prime minister, has capitalized on fears of uncontrolled immigration, promising to put Italians first. Meloni's government has adopted tough anti-immigration policies, reflecting the broader European trend of hardening attitudes towards refugees. The success of these populist movements is also rooted in the power of emotional and symbolic politics. Populist leaders use strong, simple messaging that plays on fear, resentment, and nostalgia. They cast themselves as champions of the people, against corrupt elites, globalists, and outsiders. This emotional appeal, combined with the tangible frustrations many Europeans feel regarding immigration and economic challenges, creates fertile ground for right-wing populism to flourish. However, the rise of right-wing populism is not just a reaction to the refugee crisis or economic concerns, it's also a rejection of the political status quo. Many Europeans feel disconnected from traditional political parties. To understand Europe's current immigration crisis, it's crucial to look beyond recent political movements and dig into the historical and ongoing exploitation of Africa and the Middle East. The migrant flows pouring into Europe today aren't simply the result of immediate conflicts or natural disasters. Instead, they're deeply rooted in the legacy of colonialism, economic exploitation, and geopolitical interference, issues that continue to shape the destinies of these regions. For much of the 19th and 20th centuries, European powers colonized vast territories in Africa and the Middle East, drawing artificial borders, disrupting societies, and plundering resources. In Africa, countries like Britain, France, and Belgium exploited local labor and resources, extracting minerals, rubber, and agricultural products. This led to economic systems that prioritized the needs of European markets over the development of local economies. Similarly, in the Middle East, European powers, particularly Britain and France, carved up the region after World War I, laying the groundwork for political instability that continues today. Even after these countries gained independence, the economic structures left behind by colonial powers ensured that much of their wealth continued to flow out of the continent. Multinational corporations and foreign governments maintained control over critical industries, such as oil, gas, and mining, keeping Africa and the Middle East economically dependent on external actors. This created a vicious cycle in which local economies struggled to grow, unemployment soared, and poverty remained widespread. 
One of the most glaring examples of this exploitation is Iran, where, in the early 20th century, the British-controlled Anglo-Iranian oil company, now BP, reaped massive profits from Iranian oil while leaving the country with only a fraction of the revenue. This pattern of external control continued throughout the century, with the CIA and MI6 engineering a coup in 1953 to topple Iran's democratically elected leader, Mohammad Mossadegh, after he attempted to nationalize the oil industry. Similar stories have unfolded across Africa and the Middle East, where attempts to reclaim national resources have often been met with foreign interference or outright military intervention. While the era of formal colonialism has ended, a form of neo-colonialism persists, in which former colonial powers and multinational corporations continue to dominate African and Middle Eastern economies. For instance, Western corporations maintain a stronghold over natural resources like oil in Nigeria, Colton in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and other minerals in other parts of Africa. Through exploitative trade agreements, debt dependence, and corporate control, many of these nations remain unable to fully control or benefit from their own resources. This economic exploitation has left lasting scars. Many African countries face staggering levels of poverty, corruption, and underdevelopment, even though they are rich in natural resources. Africa's largest oil producer sees little of its oil wealth trickle down to its citizens. The Niger Delta, where most of the oil is extracted, remains impoverished and polluted, with frequent spills from multinational corporations like Shell destroying local ecosystems and livelihoods. As a result of this economic exploitation, millions of people across Africa and the Middle East find themselves trapped in cycles of poverty with little hope of upward mobility. These desperate conditions force many to leave their homes in search of better opportunities, often risking their lives to reach Europe. In their eyes, Europe represents the promise of economic stability, even though the roots of their misery often lie in the very countries they seek refuge in. Economic exploitation is only one side of the story. Political instability, much of which can be traced back to foreign interference, is another critical factor driving the migration crisis. In the Middle East, Western nations have long pursued their own strategic interests, particularly in controlling oil reserves, without regard for the long-term stability of the region. The 2003 US-led invasion of Iraq is a prime example of this. The war toppled Saddam Hussein but left Iraq in a state of chaos, fueling sectarian violence and the rise of extremist groups like ISIS. The resulting instability displaced millions, with many fleeing to Europe, Similarly, in Libya, NATO's 2011 intervention helped to oust dictator Muammar Gaddafi but plunged the country into civil war, creating another wave of refugees. Across Africa, foreign-backed coups and civil wars have destabilized entire regions. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, for example, Belgium, the US, and other foreign actors have historically supported dictatorial regimes and warlords to maintain access to the country's vast mineral wealth. This has led to decades of conflict, mass displacement, and a humanitarian crisis that sends countless migrants northward toward Europe. While humanitarian aid and the presence of multinational corporations MNCs, in Africa and the Middle East may seem like forces for good, the reality is far more complex. These interventions, often touted as solutions to poverty and underdevelopment, frequently exacerbate the very problems they claim to address. Aid and MNCs can unintentionally fuel inequality, dependency, and even political instability, contributing to the immigration crisis that continues to grow in Europe. Foreign aid, particularly in the form of food, medical assistance, and financial aid, is often seen as an essential lifeline for struggling countries. On the surface, aid seems like a moral imperative, a way for wealthier nations to help those in need. However, the impact of aid on recipient countries is often more harmful than helpful in the long run. Aid can create dependency, stifle local economies, and prop up corrupt governments. A significant issue with aid is its tendency to undercut local industries. For example, food aid might seem like a straightforward way to help famine-stricken populations, 
but it can destroy local agriculture in the process. When international organizations flood a country with free or heavily subsidized food, local farmers cannot compete. They lose their market, and in many cases, their livelihoods. As a result, countries that could otherwise develop self-sufficient food systems become increasingly dependent on foreign aid to feed their populations. In many cases, financial assistance from Western countries and organizations like the International Monetary Fund IMF, or World Bank is contingent upon implementing economic policies that favor Western interests. These structural adjustment programs, for instance, often force countries to privatize industries, cut public spending, and open up their markets to foreign competition. While these policies are supposed to promote economic growth, they frequently lead to increased inequality, unemployment, and social unrest. Multinational corporations are often seen as engines of economic growth, bringing jobs, technology, and investment to underdeveloped regions. However, the reality of MNCs in Africa and the Middle East is far less rosy. While MNCs do bring some benefits, such as infrastructure development and employment opportunities, they are also notorious for exploiting natural resources, underpaying workers, and sidestepping environmental regulations. Take the oil industry in Nigeria, for example. Multinational oil companies like Shell and ExxonMobil have been extracting oil from the Niger Delta for decades. While this has generated billions of dollars in revenue, very little of that wealth has benefited the local population. Instead, it has contributed to widespread environmental degradation, with frequent oil spills destroying farmland and fishing waters. The result is that many people in the region live in extreme poverty, despite the area being one of the most resource-rich in the world. Moreover, MNCs often work closely with corrupt local elites, ensuring that profits flow to a small group of people rather than benefiting the broader population. In many cases, these elites act as gatekeepers, allowing MNCs to operate with impunity in exchange for personal wealth. This fuels corruption and inequality, as the general population is left with few benefits from the exploitation of their country's resources. The intertwined effects of foreign aid and MNC exploitation play a crucial role in the migration crisis. In many cases, aid creates dependency and fails to foster real, sustainable development, leaving countries in a state of permanent underdevelopment. At the same time, MNCs strip these countries of their wealth, ensuring that the benefits of economic activity are felt abroad rather than at home. This toxic combination of dependency, corruption, and exploitation creates a situation in which millions of people in Africa and the Middle East are unable to build stable, prosperous lives in their home countries. As Europe faces one of its most challenging periods in modern history, the continent is grappling with a labor market crisis that intersects deeply with its immigration policies. While many European nations continue to experience waves of immigrants and refugees fleeing conflict, climate change, and economic instability from Africa and the Middle East, a paradox emerges. Europe actually needs more workers. Many European countries are struggling with a demographic time bomb, a rapidly aging population and a declining birth rate. Countries such as Germany, Italy, and Spain are seeing their native-born workforces shrink, creating a labor shortage that threatens to stifle economic growth. According to studies, by 2030, Germany will need an additional 400,000 workers per year to meet the demands of its economy. Similarly, countries like Italy, facing an aging workforce, have increased their quotas for non-EU work visas by nearly 150%, aiming to attract more immigrants to fill the labor gap. This workforce shortage is a growing concern across Europe. As the population ages, there are fewer workers to support pensions, healthcare, and social services. Without an influx of younger workers, Europe's social welfare systems could become unsustainable. Immigrants, therefore, provide an essential solution to this dilemma, stepping into roles that many native Europeans no longer want to or are unable to fill. Low-wage sectors such as agriculture, construction, healthcare, and hospitality rely heavily on immigrant labor to function. Despite the clear economic need for immigrant labor, the political climate in Europe is increasingly hostile toward immigration. 
This rise in populism is fueled in part by concerns about the integration of immigrants into European societies, as well as fears about competition for jobs and resources. These concerns are often exacerbated by sensationalist media coverage that portrays immigrants as a drain on public services or as a threat to national security. As a result, even though Europe needs immigrant labor, public sentiment and political pressure have made it difficult for governments to enact policies that facilitate the flow of foreign workers. In countries like the UK, which saw a sharp rise in anti-immigration sentiment leading up to and following the Brexit referendum, immigration policies have become more restrictive. However, this has paradoxically led to an increase in demand for non-EU immigrant workers, as the UK struggles to fill essential low-wage jobs in sectors like healthcare and agriculture. Despite the political opposition to immigration, the economic benefits are undeniable. Immigrants not only fill labor shortages but also contribute to economic growth through taxes and consumption. Studies show that immigrant workers often perform jobs that native-born workers are unwilling to take, particularly in low-wage, labor-intensive sectors. These jobs are essential for the functioning of many industries, from seasonal agricultural work to elder care, where the demand for workers is growing rapidly. Moreover, immigrants bring diversity, innovation, and entrepreneurship to the economies they join. Many of Europe's most successful startups have been founded by immigrants or the children of immigrants. These businesses create jobs, foster innovation, and contribute to the overall dynamism of the European economy. While Europe's need for foreign workers is evident, the continent's policies toward immigration are often inconsistent, shaped by conflicting political and economic pressures. On one hand, businesses lobby for more open immigration policies to meet labor demands. On the other hand, political leaders face pressure from voters who are increasingly wary of immigration. In countries like Germany, efforts have been made to introduce more streamlined immigration policies to attract skilled workers. Programs aimed at training and integrating refugees into the workforce have shown promise, helping to fill gaps in industries such as healthcare and construction. However, these efforts often face bureaucratic hurdles and resistance from local populations, making it difficult to scale them up effectively. Thanks for watching. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more thought-provoking content like this. Turn on notifications so you never miss an update. See you in the next one.